Today I want to talk about something a little bit different. I've occasionally dabbled in alternative processing, but Dogfish had released a beer called Super 8 that can be used as a developer. In a lot of ways it's very similar to Caffeinol, so if you have experience with that, this shouldn't be that far of a departure. And like Caffeinol, depending on your recipe, the results might not be exact, but in some cases I found the results to be decent, if not usable. I tried a variety of films and formats uh, from Super 8, Super 16, and 35mm still photography and wanted to share my experience and to kind of explain what I did to try to get the best results. Funny enough, I find that uh, Super 8 is actually probably the worst format. Because of the film size, it's so small that any of the imperfections that may come out through this process are really defined. So Super 16 or 16mm and 35mm, of course, are going to be giving you a bigger plane of film to work with. So any of these little inconsistencies or defects are not going to be as prevalent. And if you go online, you can see that Dogfish Head has a recommended process for it. What they have is 17 fluid ounces of Dogfish Head Super 8 beer, half an ounce of vitamin C, and 1 3 4 ounce of baking soda. I spent a little bit of time developing with Caffeinol, and in that time I found that there's a difference between baking soda and washing soda. It's a pretty common misconception, but I think you'll find that most people develop Caffeinol with washing soda. So I decided to change that part of Dogfish Head's recipe. And I also found that the way that they recommend developing, which is putting everything in a bucket in the dark, 17 fluid ounces might not be enough to cover the film completely. Uh, 17 fluid ounces was about one and a half cans of beer. So I recommend using two cans of beer just to make sure that you have everything leveled out. And in that case, you also have to increase the amount of vitamin C as well as washing soda accordingly. So for the first time I developed, I decided to go as close as I could to Dogfish Head's recipe. My bathroom is already kind of converted to a dark room, but I boarded up the windows to make sure that no light came in at all and did it all in a bucket. You have to hand agitate the film in the developer for 15 minutes, and then if you don't have someone else there to spot you and tell you when your 15 minutes is up, it's pretty difficult. So I took in with me a kitchen timer, one without a light, set it to 15 minutes before I started, and just hit the button for start, and I knew when it beeped, then I could move on to the next step. Everything's going to be in the dark and you can't see, so I did it in the tub, and just a stepped process where one was developer, then I had a water wash, and then I had um, the fixer. Dogfish Head recommends a stop bath, but I don't typically use a stop bath in my regular processing, so I just did water wash. After the water wash, I put it through the fixer, and you're able to turn the lights on and see your results. At first when I looked at the negatives, it was very dense, and I wasn't sure if there was an image on there. Super 8 being so small is difficult to tell, but when you hold it up to a light, you can see that actually there is an image, and I was very happy with that. But I thought the results could be a little bit cleaner, so the next time I did it, I did it in my standard developing tank. Uh, this holds only about half a roll of Super 8. Super 8 is 50 feet, so you could fit about like 25-30 feet into here without really it touching that much, and if you're agitating a lot, you should be fine. And the other thing that I tried for the tank developing was agitating a little bit less. When you're doing it in the bucket, you kind of have to constantly agitate it to make sure that the film is in the chemistry. And I found that that was just like too much. It was too much contrast and it was giving it just a different look that I didn't want. So in the tank developing, what I did was I let it sit for about half the time and I agitated for about half the time. And that gave me results closer to what I actually wanted. Something that was kind of this alternative look, but not that strong. After developing Super 8 a few times, I decided to go with 35mm still film with the tank developing process, just what I typically always use. Same 15 minute dev time and agitating half the time and letting it sit half the time. So I tried Tri-X and HP5. I found that the results for HP5 were a lot cleaner, a lot more contrasty, and a lot more usable. So then I decided to shoot some Super 16 as well. And Super 16 kind of was the best balance for me. And because the negative is much larger than Super 8, the defects aren't as prevalent or they don't stand out as much or like block the image. You can still get good results that are usable for maybe a specific project. But for developing Super 16, I had to use four cans of beer and adjust all the other ingredients to get the chemistry right. It still wasn't enough chemistry to completely submerge the film in a bucket in the dark. So it's a difficult process, but when you do manage to pull it off, it's interesting. And, I mean, you get to develop Super 16 at home, which is pretty cool. So in the end, for me, this was an interesting experiment. I like craft beer, and I like film photography. I develop a lot at home, so it just seemed like the right thing for me. I'd say, you know, if you are someone like me who enjoys craft beer, and you enjoy film photography, you already have a darkroom set up, 
because you're developing at home, then it's worth a shot. And then if you do like this process, maybe switch over to Caffinol. There are a lot more recipes and other information online, whereas this beer dev, there's not really that much information I was trying to search for other people doing it, and there's not that many resources. It really taught me what goes into the chemistry. I've mixed my own black and white chemistry for a while now, and you just kind of use the prepackaged stuff, mix it with hot water, and you're done. Whereas this is a little bit more in-depth, same thing as Caffinol. I think when you make your own chemistry like this from scratch, you can really see that your developer is a tool just like your camera. The lens you choose, film you choose, and camera you choose are all very important, but so is the developer and the developing process. In the end, your developing process is going to take that latent image and turn it into something that you can see and use, and you have the choice to decide what that image is going to look like through the processing of the film. Even though I might not want to use this beer dev for every photo shoot, for every project, etc., it did give me a lot of good insight and might help me choose in the future what type of developer or what type of developing techniques I'll be using. If you want to hear a little bit more about how this tasted, you can go check out a video that I did with my father. Right here, I'll put a link in the description. Let me know what you think, or if you tried out this beer dev for yourself. If you have any questions about the development process, please let me know and I'll try to answer as best as I can.